Welcome everyone. I'm sorry about the mix up here. It doesn't appear that uh, YouTube has an option to go directly live anymore. It didn't used to be that way. Uh, it keep, keeps asking me for streaming software and I'm not sure why. So anyways, welcome. It's good to see everybody again. How many of you are starting back strict OMAD or are in strict OMAD? I see John Boston is here. I'm still picking the chats apart from the first attempt at a stream. According to Layla, I'm apparently a myth and a legend. Nancy, welcome. John, welcome. Regina, welcome. Adam Richard and Layla so far. I hadn't done one in a while, so I uh, wanted to catch up with everybody. Russ, welcome. Uh, I'm going to pull open a uh, comments tab here and do uh, answer some comments. When uh, so when we're done, we can people can use them as a a point of uh, a point of reference. This is our time, so if you have some video, if you have some questions, you can definitely post them. Vibhu, welcome. Luke, welcome. I followed you to lose 60 pounds with OMAD three years ago. Had an injury that got to got me to gain 40 back over the last two years. Just got back to OMAD two weeks back. Sticking to it sincerely. That's good to hear. Remember, life events are the things that uh, people use most often to justify derailments. And ultimately, there's no reason something negative happening there's really not a reason to allow those to do that. If you, you have to remind yourself sometimes that when something happens and so, uh, you know someone dies or you lose a job or something happens, eating will not help the situation. It will in fact make it worse. And one thing about the pandemic is that people have been uh, in worse situation by staying home and eating. If at all you can, you go back in those situations to strict one meal a day, you cut out the sugars, you get your head back in the game. Uh, those are the times, remember, when you feel most like quitting, that those are the times you need to be most strict and go back to hardcore OMAD because you're losing focus. And what you will do is you'll end up thinking, oh, I won't gain that much. I'll take it back off. But what you will end up doing is you'll, you'll break the spell and you will, you will lose the fasting focus that held you for, for the thick of your success. So uh, keep that in mind. Would you consider a vegan diet, Luke? Absolutely not. Uh, in fact, I've gone uh, I've gone back more to toward a keto-ish, not keto, keto-ish, aka smart carb approach, which means if you center around cruciferous vegetables and you 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 split your carbs and protein and you make sure you're you're getting uh, legitimate foods that are not grains that are not pasta and stuff like that then you can do really well pretty easily. And I know an awful lot of people 
who do better this way. It, it will keep the water retention down. It will keep, uh, keep your cravings a little bit more manageable. Now, cravings aren't an excuse to, to ever derail yourself, but still, it's smart. So I, it, while I believe and I've shown in videos going days on no meat, I'll stand behind that. I think you should keep flesh food reasonable. I would never get rid of it. And here's the thing. Consuming too many legumes and stuff like that uh, not only results in bloating, but it doesn't help with weight loss. Some of the best weight loss I did was with having a 30 to 40% of my meal as flesh food and the rest as grains or whatever, fruits and whatever. So I am vegan friendly, but I am not vegan and nor will I be, nor do I recommend you unless you choose it as a lifestyle and you, you believe in that that's the way to go. As a, as a lifestyle choice. It's not something you'd go back on. That's, that's me. And uh, that's why you see me using all kinds of foods. You don't see me excluding anything. Your foods are your friends. You don't need to be afraid of anything. But you do want to make sure that your, your foods help you stay the course if you're too lazy with foods. And I, I've been guilty of this on certain videos. I've shown junk food in, in videos and things that are less healthy. And that's okay. But again, uh, for the wrong people, it might not be okay because they may get the wrong idea. You don't want to overload on uh, certain things. So if you've had juice a while, if you've had cruciferous vegetables a while, meats a while, then it's good to give your body a break, but only in turn. You don't want to get in a situation where you quit, you quit getting something. That is my belief, and I found that you actually lose more weight because the protein, the way it's digested, actually pulls through you uh, your, your dinner. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll have regularity, more regularity with protein, also with electrolytes, uh, making sure you get enough salt, you get enough um, of, a, of a proper distribution of food, you, you find that you lose better. And I can't tell you how many people have, have found that to be the case and have told me so. Adam Richard. Hello, Adam. How many calories should one eat on OMAD? Uh, I recommend going, again, depending on your goal, depending on what you're after, I recommend, um, I recommend, you know, right at 1,500 to 1,100. Uh, go lower so that your body will get adjusted to fat, to burning fat. Don't go too much less than that. You don't need to do seven or 500 or something. That's, that's getting ridiculous. Uh, you can do that for a few days. If, you, if you're having trouble breaking cravings, you need to take your body out like a spoiled child and uh, give it a whip and go a few low day, really low calorie days so that you readjust your mind. Have broccoli, a baked potato, and a steak, or have a uh, a chicken breast or something. Uh, go out, have a you know plate of spaghetti, and then of course bring in your apple cider vinegar. This week, going through next week, we have our anniversary. It'll be uh, eight years since I lost the weight, and I wanted to do a special video, and then followed by maybe a live stream. Uh, yeah, but it's about getting back to fundamentals. The things that will safeguard you are the fundamentals of this channel, and all those old. Wonky videos I did way back in the day are still true. The things I said are still true. Uh, are you still really hungry in OMAD? Okay. Hmm? Uh, um, are you still really hungry in OMAD? Hi, Ann. How's it going? Uh, no, I've, I've adjusted back to strict OMAD. I, I had a few days a month ago where I, I was cheating. I had a, my birthday. Uh, I, I, I kind of... It went fast and loose, but now I'm strict OMAD again. Uh, very smart carb, uh, very you know strict. I have a couple days, you know, a day here of non no meat, and then I have days where I do get half meat, half protein, half carb, and I'm more much more strict than I used to be. I have uh, some uh, the, the matcha Japanese matcha green tea. I have ginger on a regular basis. I have of course distilled water, which I, I've recommended for years now. Uh, I have my apple cider vinegar. I'm getting one to two tablespoons per day consistently, even when I work. And I'm going to have a video coming up pretty quick on uh, the best takeout containers for uh, lunches. So if you need to take your OMAD meal to go, I have some recommendations on that. One really good one. 
You have been most realistic with your videos. I have followed many. I intend to clear my head of bugs as I go along this time. Last time over, the results were so overwhelming. Good, couldn't process. There's no reason. It's only your mind. It is only your mind. I have a video coming on uh, how to meditate for those who do want to get into meditation. It's not something I did in years past. It is certainly something I've, I've adopted. And if you can keep your head quiet, if you can keep your, your head calm, you will succeed. Blaise Pascal said, uh, all the problems in the world come from man's inability to sit quietly in a room. It's really powerful. It's really true. Acer White, hello, st hello, starting strict. So you're starting strict. All right. I'm two weeks back into a strict OMAD regimen and uh, uh, feeling good. Uh, I'm going to be back in Wonderland in a couple days. That's one one o n e d e r l a n d a way of being back in the one hundreds. I've never been far, but but I, I want to get back. E Demont, once you get to maintenance weight, you said one could expect to fluctuate up to thirty pounds. That seems a bit much. Could you please elaborate? Well, actually, fifteen pounds. Uh, thirty pounds would be if you're trying to maybe go on, like uh, if you're looking to put on muscle or something. You probably wouldn't do thirty. Um, Here's the, what I said is if you – let's say you're going to be 165, and this is I think you're referring to this. If you want to be 165, you need to go to 150 in your weight loss so that in case you – so you have a range to, 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 to glide into. So, yes, it's possible you put back on 15 pounds, which can happen, and then a little more. So you want a breathing room to where there's some distance between your lower and your upper threshold. Uh, I also mentioned 30 pounds is pretty much within the threshold of most weights, pe people. So if they gain weight, they're not going to gain more than about 30 pounds if they're halfway smart about it, even if they're not really trying hard. That said, a 15 round, 15 pound weight range should do you nicely. I really don't think you would have a whole lot of uh, reason to get 30 pounds overweight unless you're pushing to bulk or something and you're a young athlete or something. Uh, a lot of these guys you see, these uh, big, strong, uh, you know, these big, strong young guys can, they have fluid, good fluid in their joints. So they can go out there and, and play football, do wrestling, and then bulk up uh, without doing injury to their joints or anything. Uh, over a certain age, you really wouldn't do that. So if somebody gains 30 pounds and they're 45 or something, that's, that's trouble because your joints are going to feel that. And uh, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. So I, uh, I think, yeah, 30 pounds, you, unless somebody really decides to like just go crazy, become like a, you know, a movie star where they need to bulk up or an athlete, you really wouldn't need to do that. And 15 pounds should be enough. So let's say you go, you go the summer, you let yourself go, you put on about 15 pounds. You shouldn't put on more than that unless you're really living it up. And uh, remember, I've said since the beginning, four months or more at a weight will kind of keep you there. Once your body adjusts and gets ready to adjust you downward, you're not going to have too much trouble staying at a particular weight. Your body's going to want to keep you there because basically, aside from water weight, it's not going to uh, be able to move you that fast. You're going to be able to have a little bit of a range. Keep Adam says keep carbs, uh, carbs under 100 grams. I think that's a good range if you're even aiming for carbs. Uh, a smart carb for me means... Uh, making sure you're not getting junk food. You know Cheetos are, are, are junk food. Uh, uh, cookies and candy. If you're doing that, you're being irresponsible and you're going to easily cross that threshold. If you are using fruits and normal things of a, of a, of a reasonable nature, then, and you are on, and you're mo monitoring the amount you're eating, you're going to, I think, stay within 100, 120 grams of carbs. I think it's pretty good. Uh, and you don't have to be afraid of carbs, but the better, some people will do a lot better. And if that's the case, if you feel better, if you feel like you hold less water, then go ahead and go lo even lower carb. Aim for about 70, 70 or 50 grand. I, I wouldn't track that. But again, we don't want to get back into playing the dieting game. Uh, playing the dieting game is where you start going in. You don't want to do that. You just want to eat responsibly and master your cravings. You want self-control. You want mindfulness. Mama Lo Z. Hi, Mama Lo. Had to buy smaller clothes and, and are donating my bigger clothes. Slow and steady wins the race. You're exactly right. Uh, it's really nice. There's good. I had an opportunity recently to uh, find a, a place that where you can donate suits and nicer clothes. 
So you you can do that. Find a good place. Donate your clothes. It sounds like it looks like, yeah, if you haven't already, yeah, that's a very good deed too. Just donate your clothes. And of course, right there, that's your insurance not to gain weight. Your insurance not to gain weight is because you're, you're, you don't buy bigger clothes. <laughs> hello, hello. Don't buy bigger clothes. Now that you've got your smaller slender fit clothes, which by the way, quite a few people, uh, they wear baggy clothes, including myself. I still find myself buying slender cut or, or uh, uh, loose fitting clothes, but I have to remind myself I don't need those anymore. It's it's stayed with me all these years. Um, thanks for the info, Luke. Thank you, Luke, for being a part of the action here. How do you get out of the negative mindset I find myself in after gaining all this COVID weight, beating myself up so much? Well. Um, uh, the, the, as far as mindset, there's there's what you're feeling is action. You're feeling, in a sense, karma. Uh, karma just means action, and, and you are you did that to yourself. So naturally, you're you're realizing the fact that you've got to start back the other way. The more pleasure you have, the harder it is to get out of that rut. So what do you do? You start. You you don't think about it anymore because it's not helping to beat yourself up. Instead, you just start today. You don't put it off. You don't you don't make plans to. Uh, to, to start tomorrow or next week, you'd start right now. And then you're doing all you can do. Go in and uh, be reasonable with yourself. Beating yourself up won't do it. It's like uh, yelling at an IT guy because he can't fix the, your system. You know, it does nothing good. If, he, if you told him and he's, he's the expert who's supposed to clarify it, then all you can do is wait. Uh, but uh, as far as negative mindset, that will... It, it, the, your action, you're still in control. You can keep gaining weight. You can feel sorry for yourself and jump off and say, just, you know, to hell with it, I'll just be fat. A lot of people do that. They're called fat statistics. A lot of people orbit this channel. Uh, they're, they're called, I call them orbiters. You know, you know, everybody has orbiters of some kind, you know, and I get, I get people that have been trying to lose weight for years. They can't hold themselves accountable. So if, I hope that's not you. It doesn't, I don't, I don't, Hopefully it's not. Uh, if if it is, then uh, you have to decide where you go from here. Uh, look at look at how long I went, and then until I finally was able to turn it around. You have nobody to blame but yourself. And once you accept that, it's time to move on with action. So, are you taking the reverse action? Are you heading backwards in the uh, the direction you need to go? What can you do? Um, the less time you spend thinking about things, the more time you're actually moving towards something. If you're sitting there just thinking about doing something, then that's that's a whole lot of trouble. Uh, you should make a decision and move. Uh, again, a lot of people spend time on YouTube watching videos for motivation and all this. That's only good as long as you execute on it. So many people make that mistake. You, the, the same people make all of the talk about hyping up and getting excited. None of that is good unless you are actually doing something. Me right now, not only am I back on into strict OMAD, but I'm holding myself to a uh, uh, a ten a ten mile minimum week on my runs. So I've got to do more than that. I've got to maintain my uh, nine minute mile time. If I slip under that, then I, I get mad at myself. So I tell myself I have to go out there and. Um, Make sure I'm maintaining my cardio, my ability to hold, you know, to keep up my my runs, which to me is important. And I've maintained my uh, herb supplements, my ashwagandha for uh, it's one of the best things for your joints, uh, curcumin, turmeric, and uh, this these are my, I'm giving you an example of how I hold myself accountable when I feel negative. If I have a crappy run, I come back and it's a ten minute or less, I feel. Like I've slipped, like I've lost my edge. I feel like an old man. And I say, I can't do that. I gotta be at least at a nine minute mile. Hopefully within a within about six months or so, be around have that seven minute mile. Uh, you gotta work towards something. And if you're not, you're not on track. Because you're gonna have life get in the way anyway. We're lots of negative stuff. You're gonna have, you know, people are gonna die, people are gonna uh, do all this sorts of stuff. You can always fall for that. There's tons of people like that. Don't be one of them. Just set the goal and keep setting the goal high. It's like any company. If you work for a company, you set goals, you set directives, you set uh, benchmarks. And if you don't meet them, you reset and you keep going. Um, so you see, I've got my own. You've got yours. I've got mine. 
Uh, I'm going to be back to about, uh, I'm going to aim for, I'm going to be back in Wonderland, like I said, pretty soon. I'm going to be having even better runs because every pound you take off, any runner will tell you. Um, it, it makes a difference on your joints. You feel better. You have more stamina. I did nearly two miles today, and I still feel good. I could still go out there and run a couple more. did six miles the other day. One of the good things about OMAD is if you want to do cardio and you, you're, uh, you're, you're able to, you know, you, you're good for it and you're motivated. When you're hungry, you can run. It's one of the best things you can do. Uh, you can uh, you can do lots of cardio. And, and then the more you adjust, the better you are. And your body will start becoming a more efficient fat burner because you'll more quickly get burning into your fat. So I gave you a load there, Russ. Uh, but the point, don't stay still. You keep moving. If you're not moving toward an objective, you're dying. And that's true in life. It's true in health. It's true in health, cleaning your teeth. It's uh, if you're not, you know, you got to mark your progress because uh, you, you'll you'll get soft. Uh, look at uh, I know this sounds cliche, kind of with with uh, you know all Gen Xers of Rocky. You know, Rocky goes up against Mr. T, and by the time Mr. T came along, Mr. T was blood, sweat, and tears in the gym, and Rocky had gotten soft. He was maintaining ten title defenses against a bunch of bombs, and uh, Mr. T comes in and cleans his clock because Mr. T wanted it. I'd say you kind of have to be you know, in a, a more life pliable way. Second time OMAD. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Second time OMAD. First time 11 months. First time while working, now retired, doing it again, and it's easier and more enjoyable. I'm glad to hear. Make it, make it your thing. D uh, get the foods you want. Enjoy yourself. Um, find your optimal balance. And remember, and you guys who are retired, one of the biggest options you have is to be able to stretch out your hunger time. A lot of people complain. They say, well, I was bored. It's hard because I don't have anything to do. I'm going to eat. That's one of the best times to do because you can stretch out your activities. You can plant a garden. You can take up running. You can take up a new hobby. You can get out of the house. You can uh, do anything you want. Really, you're in a very good position. John Boston, one of my favorites. How you doing, John? Had a great locale OMAD yesterday. Today, not as good. I walked three miles yesterday. That's super. And if you can do that, especially after your meals, you won't have an issue getting tired after your meals. You won't have, even if you do overeat a little bit. Uh, but tomorrow, no, just be more conscious of what you're eating. Be more mindful. Uh, good to hear from you. Thanks a lot. Greetings from Maldives. Joseph, thank you. Joe, have you looked at your ketones at all? I'm producing the ketones, but not that much. I don't track that. I really don't. I know how I feel. When I feel flush, I feel like I have less water. I feel better. I feel like I have more energy. And one of the things I've noticed getting older, I have a better mood. And I know that I'm doing well. Uh, I, I get rid of fluids and I drink more. I realize my, my bowel movements are regular. That's how I know I'm doing all right. Uh, when I notice days where my bowel movements are not, uh, in the past I've done the ketone check thing and I had a no, totally normal response. I didn't have any problems there. But I'm one of these. I, I don't like the, the minutia of tracking stuff like that. So I'm not one of these people when they park their car, they take that sun blinder and put it on the dashboard so that it's keeping the sun out. I don't have the patience. Like my girlfriend wanted to get me a uh, sheet stays to keep the sheet under the bed so it doesn't pull off. I was like, ah, screw that. I'm not going to use that. So I get to a point where I'm done and I just get rid of, I get rid of what I'm working on. I say I'm through with it. But maybe you're like that. Maybe you're not. Uh, but if you sounds like you've done it before, you, you don't mind trying me. I'm not going to fool you because I know how I feel. And if you stay in touch with your body, that's part of mindfulness. You should know what you're thinking. If you know you're getting depressed and you're snapping off at people, then you're probably not adjusted. <laughs> A lot of people on OMAD, they start getting short with people. And everybody around them is like, eat, eat. And it's like, no, don't eat because that's the problem. You kept fixing. And then you got dependent on... Um, Lots of sugar. And then when your blood sugar got low, you notice. But once you fat adapt, you're not. So ketones will come around. Only uh, only the truly insulin resistant, metabolically resistant people after a short while will 
fail to turn the sticks purple, if I remember right. I remember that's how it works with the sticks, the ketone testing sticks. Uh, there's, yeah, only a truly insulin resistant person would have that problem. I, usually you'll start, unless you do have some insulin resistance going on. I'm not really sure. In, I don't remember. Um, uh, some people do. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but usually your body's going to start burning your fat. It has to, because you'll die if you don't. You wouldn't be able to fast. Hi, Daniel. What do you think of OMAD vegans? Um, true vegans or people who eat vegan? Uh, it, there's a little bit of confusion with the term I, nowadays I have found on the internet because so many vegans are quitting and people are, they're accusing, the vegan camp is a joke, man. They're accusing each other of not being real vegans. Uh, then some of them are found secretly to be eating eggs and then others are found to be eating honey. Uh, it's kind of a joke. It, it really has become a bad joke. Um, I am not a fan of veganism, like I just got done explaining earlier. Uh, but at the same time, if somebody chooses that and they find that it works for them and they're able to maintain over a consistent amount of time their nutrients, then that's fine. I tend to find that most people, especially the more calories you get from legumes and stuff, you're going to bloat after a while and you're gonna, not even going to lose as much weight. They don't lose as much weight as meat eaters. That's, that's, that's what I have noticed. Um, but that's, like I said, there are people that certainly do, and we're not food restrictors on this channel. So if a person wants to adopt that lifestyle, then I'll stand right out of the way. If somebody wants to eat all bloody steak, I mean, go right ahead. Uh, I'm not going to put my vote on it, but my stamp of approval on it. But I, then again, it's not about me and my approval. You don't need mine. So Nancy, hello Nancy. I've tried so many times to lose weight the last 30 years. It seems like dawning tests I'll never accomplish. Sorry if this sounds discouraging, but it's the way I feel. Well, then what a lot of, you don't know how many people uh, feel that way. I, I don't know your history. I don't know uh, exactly uh, from your username. I can't remember if I've seen your comments. I don't think I have. Um, but your body is not from outer space. I mean, you have a metabolism like anyone else, which means if you follow the principles, you will lose weight, but you have to be completely accountable and you have to say, here's what's going to happen if I don't. Uh, you have to change and you have to decide that you, you're, you, you are as tempted as you decide you are. If you decide that you're going to talk to yourself like a child and say, oh, you'll be fine when you're hungry and not give to the hunger, then you won't cave. Uh, you have to keep yourself in that mindset. And, you know, there's a genetic hand in that. There's always genetic hand. Some people are born heavier. But if you're in touch with your body image and what you can actually achieve, the steps to beating any addiction, and I have a video on this, and I, I did a, another one, but essentially it is clarity, it is cancellation and reconstruction. Clarity, know your goal. Cancellation, cancel your debt, your food debt. Uh, fixing your body, which is basically a type of karmic debt. You've eaten, you've let yourself go. This is the fruits of your labor. So cancel that debt and say, I'm not going to do that anymore. Don't let anything stand in the way of your commitment. Uh, make sure you're humble about it, that you approach it knowing what you can do and can't do. So you would say, I know, I can, I know that I can't control my metabolism, but I can control the fact that I'm not going to eat before or after my window, and I'm only going to eat once. That's an example of cancellation. And then construction, deconstruction. On that phase, you're just going to deconstruct and reconstruct your addiction. So instead of thinking of food as good, you're going to say it's only, go, it's only good going in one way. So uh, just like the monks, they used to make the, the monks in training spit out their food in their hand and put it in their mouths again if they were eating too fast. Because they would make them learn food is not good. That's an illusion. Food is just anything being like or disliked. Those are illusions. So the way to break an illusion is to re reconfigure your palette, like your re reinstall software, like an IT guy would on your, your company's computer. Uh, you know, clear your cache. So what you do is you clear your palette. You say, I eat once. That's the reconstruction. And once you do that, you set a pattern and you reinforce it. That's how you break addiction. And it works with anything. You can do the same thing with smoking. You can say, think of the color yellow when you think of cigarettes. You just deconstruct it. Instead of saying cigarettes are good, you say, no, they're terrible. Look at how all these chemicals, it makes your, young, your lungs yellow and brown and nasty. And if you see that every time and you don't rethink it, you, you're going to 
completely own your your life and you're going to feel good and you won't have weight as an excuse and once you once you break that spell of relying on food and the victim mindset you'll look back and say how didn't i do that years earlier uh, if I can help you, Nancy, reach out to me. I can. I do consulting. If you if you'd like some, I, I I'd like to know more about your story. I, I don't really know more uh, about you, so I don't really know all that you've gone through or your struggles and whatnot. Hi, Sue. Sue is in the house. Welcome back. Sue is an old timer to this channel. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thanks for sharing your journey, Joe. I am back on OMAD and broke through a plateau. Now at college weight. All right eat anything I want. No special diet. Oh man, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. It's absolutely right. The monks are taught to eat from 9 a.m. to no more than high noon. And when they do that, they live their lives that way. And they're not nutrient deficient. They go through their lives. They learn to optimize what they eat and to not clean. And that's the problem. It's this clinging. It's this clinging to Kellogg's cereal and pizza and, uh, you know, all the candies and all the stuff you get at every corner store. That you have. It's very addicting. But it's only addicting when you believe it's a thing. It's only addicting when you 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 think that there's that there's any pleasure there. Ultimately, you know there's not. There's no pleasure there in eating. You'll you'll be hungry again. You'll always be hungry cleaning. And so you have understood that. Sue, you understand that. You you've broken through and you realize something in breaking your plateau, correct me if I'm wrong, but you realized. The plateau itself wasn't even there. It's also an illusion. It's just your concept of time and how much you believe you're struggling. And once you don't believe you're struggling anymore, what was a plateau ends up being a, a fictitiously selected point in time, which you happen to notice based on what you thought was discomfort. So when you say, oh, I'm fine, I'm going to be fine, you realize there's no excuse to eat. I mean, there's really no excuse to eat because you have to give yourself permission to do that. If you say hungry or craving when you're hungry, you have to be a third party to your craving at that point and step out and say, if I go in that kitchen and eat, or if I jump in the car and go to Shipley's Donuts, it's me who's doing that. It's not any freaking body else. You failed before, Sue. So you understand that. And you, you know how it is to get back on it. Back on OMAD, you break through the plateau, and then pretty soon it becomes pretty darn easy to do. Uh, you get to that point where you say, like I pointed out many years ago in the first video, uh, you say, I know I can do this. You say, I know I can do this. Mr. DeMont says, Joe, could you do a video on how to run a marathon? Well, I'm up to a 5K level, so I could do a 5K. I haven't done one yet, so I don't know if I'm really an expert to talk on it. I can tell you my, I can do a video. I'll probably do a video on my tips and trips, tricks for getting into running. Uh, because I've made, I've had failed attempts and I've, I've gotten a few times I've gone through the shin splint phase. I've gone through the knee issues phase and, um, I can go over the supplements I use. I can do, and I do now, uh, now I'm pretty much close to being called a, a serious runner. Um, uh, maybe depending, if you compare me to a professional, definitely not. Uh, like a, a lay runner, someone who, who's, who's reclaimed their health and is, has much more endurance than the average guy now. Uh, I never thought, by the way, I never thought that I could ever get to a point where I could go a whole two miles without stopping. Most people can run like a tenth of a mile and then they're out of breath and then they got to stop. Uh, it's, there are some tricks, but it's pretty easy. And thank you for the recommendation, though. Inadvertently, you gave me a recommendation there. Uh, how, on a video. I think that's a good topic. And I've had a question uh, when I mention it, mostly in a live stream or something like this. People, I'll get a comment on that. But it's a good, it's a good idea. I lost, I lost 50 kilograms on S, SOS, WF vegan. Now I'm WF SOS. I'm sorry. I don't know your terminology there, Adam. SOS at WF. Regardless, if you found something that works for you, by all means, do it. 20 kilogram left to go. You UK people, I got to look up the different, um, I have to look up the different calculations. 20 kilograms, that's a good amount of weight. Is OMAD veganism sustainable long term? Well, for many, no. 
um, according to whatever. Look at how many people are failing today. Look at how many ex-vegans there are, and they're making channels, and then these people are running them around telling them, you know, you guys are we're never vegan or something like that. Uh, but it's a, it's it depends. Yeah, you can definitely make it sustainable if you do it right, and you you make sure you're not deficient in anything. And you you if you find that it's working with your weight loss, it's or if you, assuming weight loss is still your goal, you can for sure for sure do it. I agree with Sue. Hey Joe, thanks for the live session. Thank you, Regina. And welcome back. Thanks, Russ. Dave, not attempting to lose any weight, just doing it to improve overall health, improve digestion, and help natural HGS, human growth hormone. Absolutely. Uh, you can absolutely do that. Um, my advice to all of you who are not really looking to lose weight, maybe you know, maybe you will lose a little, maybe you won't. You'll probably lose a little uh, on OMAD, J in general, because it's very hard to gain weight on OMAD. But uh, if you want to help your chemical levels and your nature, then I would, I would advise doing your daily meals in a way that is especially not clinging. And when I say that, go out and have a day where you eat and do everything you can leading up to the meal and during the meal to stay in control. And purposely eat a little more if you don't feel like it. And the days when you feel like eating a lot, eat less. So kind of, um, kind of maximize your mindfulness at the meal. And Start playing, and I said this about going into maintenance, uh, start playing with increasing your uh, activity levels and your sunlight and the amount of weight you lift, uh, uh, walking, leading to running if you can, uh, or a, uh, an adaptation of that. You can run and just, you know, a, a tenth or a, a quarter of your mile and still get, and get great exercise uh, just like you can just walking. But if you don't run at all, or if you don't want to run at all, you don't definitely don't have to. You can just walk or in, uh, just lift weights. You can do things that are going to engage your body and your mind. I guess that's what I'm really going for there. Uh, you can get, engage your body and your mind fully to get the most out of your 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 journey to where you're not sitting there thinking of calories. Instead, you're thinking on, okay, I'm going to get my best nutrients and then I'm going to do other things in the day and then move your attention from your meal to the rest of your day uh, do I have the energy I want do I have the energy I need what can I do to make myself more energetic and it may mean running up a flight of stairs it may mean spending more time with family but start to get away from the classic OMAD model into a more advanced version and I tell everybody on this channel the big challenge for you with for anybody moving past weight loss is to blend your life into the whole routine to where many days come along, you eat more than you normally would, but you don't fret over it because you have a sense of balance. Really important because otherwise you don't want your whole life to be, to be on a diet. That's what people accuse me of at the first of this channel. A couple of few years ago, they were like, are you teaching people to just be on a diet? And the answer is of course, no, you can't be on a diet forever. Uh, you're not. You're on. You're in a lifestyle, but you're also having to adjust that lifestyle to your needs, which change. So Raj, welcome back, my friend. When I have negative thoughts, I pretend that I'm a robot who is programmed to do very small, singular tasks at a time and eat in a particular eating window. Perfect analogy. Uh, going back to insight meditation or uh, mindfulness meditation, what you want to do is call the name of the task. And it's no different than T-800, you know, Terminator flashing up when he looks at something. His programming represents this is a this model car. You, you know how the, on any of the, the Terminator movies. Uh, it's taking, capturing images and dimensions of things. And when you do that, you do the same thing of what you're saying right there. In a way, you become a robot and you say kind of new hardware detected. Like when you plug a, a keyboard into a, or a mouse and a keyboard into a computer system. It pops up and regards it. If you can teach, if you can keep your mind to acknowledge a task, you will not only do that task better, but you will bear in mind when you lose focus on the task. You will, for instance, if you're driving and you say driving, you'll drive more attentively, but you'll also realize you're angry and you're hurrying. So it's time to slow down. Same thing if you're eating. If you come to your meal and you say eating, consuming, and you think thoughts of temperance, you'll instinctively know you're rushing. Uh, if you put the five-minute buffer, 
uh, as I noted in the five minute buffer video, you put a timer and you wait an extra five minutes before you eat. It'll break that monkey mind, that uh, feisty golden retriever side of you that's trying to hurry to eat and, and, and scarf down your food so you develop self-control that way. So Raj, I think you're right on target there. Some people wouldn't put refer to it as a robot, but it does make a lot of sense. You're, you're getting a battery, which in this context is food. We, we fuel up based on our, what we eat. We should. And when we do, when we eat candy and junk, we, we eat poison. It's, it'd be like, uh, you know, corroding our circuits, so to speak, to, to keep on with the analogy. The big powerful point there is to make sure that you see tasks without emotion. Buddha said, uh, I know I refer to Buddhism a lot. Uh, uh, he doesn't think nothing of it, just, just, just for reference sake. Uh, seeing is seeing, hearing is hearing, being is being. So meaning a task is a task. It, it doesn't matter if you like it. It doesn't matter if you don't. All of that is the lie, is the, the fiction, is the story we, we create around it. We don't want judgment. We just want the task. So if we look at our food robotically, as you said, we do, we do ourselves a great, a, a terrific service. Hello, Jeff. How much time in eating window and best time of day for OMAD? Well, it, as I've said before, it depends on you. Um, uh, it depends if you're a night worker. It depends if you're, you know, you work in the mornings. It depends uh, on a lot of things. Uh, what I, my favorite meal time is now noon to four. Uh, noon to three, really. I, I tend to be eat, eating, actually eating at around 1230-ish, 1215-ish, and I finish pretty quickly. Um, when you, The main thing is to keep the eating window for scare, schedule difficulties. So if one day you, you, you run into a situation where you end up eating later, it's still within the eating window. It may be toward the end or it may be toward the beginning, but you always want to get it in uh, in the eating window because you want to be solid you want to be accurate and you want to keep your body used to making insulin at the appropriate time and when you're done you're done you're not you you don't need to think about food after that you you drink your juice or whatever way you're getting your apple cider vinegar getting your two tablespoons ideally uh, drink it down go back into your optimal zone and you're done even if you ate too little if you ate too much you've moved on for that day and when you can do that the time doesn't really matter you can do later in the evening you can do it in the morning i myself like to do 11 to 2 or 12 to 3 so that's what i'm doing right now by the way um hey debbie debbie oh man is in the house yes 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 I'm scrolling down on some of you guys' comments. I realize I'm a little bit getting behind here. Let's see. <laughs> what do you think about Jason Fung? Ah, oh, I wish he would stop telling people that diet sodas spike insulin. They don't. Um... Uh, he, uh, I would, I wish he would, and I don't know that this is true. I have heard that he says OMAD is a fad. If indeed he said that, then I definitely oppose him. Uh, I don't. That he's he's tell, he's doing a great disservice to the fasting community that he himself supports. Um, yeah, I've been very mad at him on a couple of things, mainly that one. Um, it's he's he's. I don't know why he, he's he's gotten on this. Remember, just like turtlenecks, uh, knowledge goes in and out of style. So people go through cycles where knowledge becomes cool and not cool. Bell bottoms, another example. It's cool, then it's not cool. Wait long enough, flip up lights on cars are going to come back in style. It's just that way. So everybody's gotten this chemicals, no chemicals, no GMO. The new one is uh, estrogenic foods. It's all crap. It's all crap. It doesn't matter, but he's jumping and he's telling people, and a diet soda can make the difference between success or failure for a lot of people. Uh, telling people you can't do that, you're going to get fat, is not only wrong, but it actually hurts someone else's journey. So if I really, I've heard mostly, most of what he would say I would agree with. Uh, ultimately, I don't, I try to stay away from all weight loss people now. I try to go solo because most of them, they're, they're looking out for number one, but I'm going to end up in a situation where if I endorse someone and they change, then it, it, I don't like to, 
I don't like that. I used to do the ones I once said, uh, Joel Furman is more accurate than, and I regretted saying that because he, I found all kinds of quacky supplementation, money-making garbage he did back in, uh, years ago. And, uh, I ended up regretting. So I try to stay neutral in terms of, um, here's the thing. If you know someone who supports fasting, uh, I don't see if he doesn't do OMAD, how he would recommend someone consistently lose weight because you don't lose as much weight if you do complete fasts. If you do two days of fasting per week, you're not going to lose that much. You're not going to lose as much weight as if you do OMAD. OMAD is going to trump pretty much everything. So to consistent. So I don't, I really wouldn't, wouldn't understand that. But to honor, uh, to, to answer your question, I, I, I'm, you know, those are, there are a couple things with him that I don't, I, I can't support. And that's why I even did a video on it. So, uh, one of my, my angrier videos, one of my most hated videos, by the way, I got nearly as many dislikes as I got likes. <laughs> I don't care. That's fine. I want to say what I want to say. Thank you, Joe. How can someone get in touch with you? Go to Joe at JoeHolmanOnline.com. Uh, you can get in touch with me, Joe at JoeHolmanOnline.com, and I'll be happy to reply. So that we can set up a time and talk. John Boston. Joe, that's wonderful that you can run. Are you still drinking diet soda? Yes, I've got a big uh, container in there with cherry diet Kool-Aid. Uh, I enjoy it from time to time. I still get mostly distilled water and, of course, green tea, dandelion tea, burdock tea, stinging nettle root, uh, the good stuff more so than that. But I do, I'll, I'll, a coffee. <laughs> uh, one of my favorites is Uban coffee. You can get it at any uh, Kroger, H-E-B, or Albertsons if you have one. Uh, I, I do I do normal drinks. I'm not freaking out about it at all. I know it's not going to do anything negative. So, uh, <laughs> Richard clarifies here, salt, oil, sugar-free, and whole food is the FW. So SOS is salt, oil, sugar-free, and then WF, whole food. Okay, thank you for that. Not vegan anymore, no need to be. Yeah, you, you really don't unless you have some sort of an, an ethical contention if you believe that you have to preserve all life. You know, to me, that's still a problem because how are you going to – every time you wash your hands, you kill bacteria. You're going to always end up killing some life. And then if you get into that debate of is it sentient life or not, to me, it's just a harder way to go. That said, any vegans watching, I'm not knocking you. Just do what you've got to do to to be your your best version. Way to go on 110 pounds. That's really good. Debbie is late to the party, but better late than never. Debbie Omad in the house. Siraj says, Joe, people are dropping like flies here in India. Yes, I'm so sorry to hear. Dead bodies are being burned in my village. Holy God. <laughs> We've gotten into a really dark area. There's dead bodies in your village. Wow, it's like like a movie or something. Dead bodies are being burned in the parking lot as no space is available. I'm surprised you're even able to get online, man. It sounds like, uh, what is that movie, The Purge? You know, it sounds like uh, Mad Max or something. That's really terrible. Yes, I did hear but the, the, the new COVID-19 is, is, is deadlier. You guys got something else, though. Uh, you guys got a – it's the other ones were more infectious. This one appears to actually be worse. I'm told that it's pretty much native to, to India. Um, I'm really sorry to hear it, man, but you hold the fort and uh, do what you got to do. You don't want to uh, get sidetracked or have anything like that um, – derail you uh, just keep going man and try not to keep yourself healthy uh, keep taking reishi mushroom uh, shiitake you know any of the, the good ones i've recommended before uh, stay healthy stay fasting uh, get sunlight stay focused joe i'm a trader so i have some coffee in the morning then after the market closes that's when i do my oh man that's an excellent little plan you got there the pressure's off then you get to go back and really enjoy your meal kitchen is closed to four people you got it howard mcnear i got through four day welcome uh, i got through four days of omad and my blood pressure skyrocketed any ideas what might be happening uh did you what did you 
No, it wouldn't be. Here, I get this occasionally. Some people come up and they say, oh, I went on OMAD and my blood pressure skyrocketed. But in those cases when people say that, I never know if they started drinking something like uh, energy drinks or uh, sometimes people do that. They, they go on OMAD and they become caffeine junkies and they start super power downing uh, like salty stuff. And if you are susceptible to high blood pressure, that can affect things. But it is not the OMAD that is affecting things. Now, it could be your flu you already had high blood pressure and you're flushing your kidneys out in there. They don't know what to do yet. You're still adapting. But if you did not already have an issue with that, there's no reason why that would happen on OMAD. There's just nothing. It would be like saying, uh, it would be like saying, I ate before I went to bed last night and I had high blood pressure. Well, that would depend on, it would be the same. What, what did you eat? Um, what, what did you eat before that? You see what I mean? It stretches into other questions. And it, it, it cannot be OMAD. And I, one of the, when I started this channel, I had a friend who used to uh, uh, listen in on the live streams and uh, participate in the forums. And she would say she got sick and she did a whole forum post about how she handled some bird, bird poop at work. And because she was on OMAD, she was sick for four days. How would we, how could you make a correlation between the two? It's possible to get sick right when you start eating properly. I mean, it just is. And it's possible to contract a virus and then you don't have a defense for it. Um, it is. It's possible. But it's not related to OMAD. There's nothing OMAD would do unless, you, depending on what you are you know, you, what you're consuming, or I don't know if you take meds or anything like that. So that's one of those questions. You might look back at, at what you, kind of what you've been doing and see how things have gone. I've got to, uh, I didn't realize I unplugged the laptop here. This computer has a, I'm a dying battery. I've got to replace it. I'm probably going to buy a new one pretty soon. If I go under 20%, it just cuts off on And if I attempt to jump on the Chromebook, then it's going to, the visual quality will be so bad, and so will the sounds. Howard says, no sugar, salt, alcohol, caffeine, or oil, no junk. Uh, well, I don't, have you had your kidneys tested? Um, what about your electrolytes? Are you, or it could be, a, I don't know. I mean, it, maybe you have an underlying kidney condition. And, and when you say high blood pressure, what's it skyrocketing to? It, it may, I, whatever it is, it's unrelated to, to that. It, it's, now, it's possible for people to get cramps. So sometimes people that start OMAD, they run into problems with cramps because they're getting rid of salt or, and they don't have enough, and so they add salt back in. And even like stuff like zero, zero cal Gatorades, or, and they find that it solves a problem, whereas before that, they get cramps. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would really like to know, 175 over 110? Dude, you're right at the 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 the, the point of um, running going to the hospital. Uh, if if that doesn't come down like within the evening, you probably that's you can lose your vision. I mean that can. You're right. Just it won't, if it hits two hundred, then were you tracking it before? Or, or what was it normally? Ah, that would yeah, that would concern me, man. I, I would go and I would. I would, you know, how, how is it when you drink water? Because if you go to, you could do a water fast or something like that. Um, but again, I'm not going to advise you anymore. I'm not a doctor. That You might need a doctor. I mean, you honestly might. I don't want to overstep my bounds uh, on some of that stuff. And I'm not against taking, if you, you know, and they might be able to give you something that just reduces it. So anyways, uh, yeah. That's, that's, but that is, ever, I, I've had maybe three people, you and three other people all time mention that to me over the course of six years, eight years. So it's not common, but it, it could be just timing. Debbie says, I have been doing OMAD for more than two years now. It is nice to see fasting has become more mainstream. Yes, it has, and it is more accepted than when I, when I started on my journey. Yes, how do you, and Debbie knows how I felt. That nobody had done it. Uh, you never heard of OMAD before, before my uh, channel, uh, and uh, we changed the game, didn't we? 
Uh, OMAD Dad did a video today, for those of you who didn't see it. Um, and, you know, the OMAD community is getting stronger. The fasting community is starting to get a foothold. And be, even uh, Eric Berg and all these other people are starting to realize it's the way to go. If you have broccoli, you have eggs, you have some lentils, you have, uh, well, you know, nice uh, well-rounded dinner and then an apple cider vinegar and a, maybe an apple juice. And you do that every day, you're going to change your game or any combination of decent food. Uh, you know. Debbie has her own story and, and uh, figured that out. And have, um, this is powerful stuff, and we we made a change. That's what revolution is about. The old mad revolution is about making change. That's why I'm still here. I wasn't going to even do this today, but I decided to do it because I kept thinking you need to maybe reconnect. Uh, that's what it's about. It's keeping the revolution going. Joe, you should do a review of DDPY Yoga. There again, I'm sorry to plead ignorance. I don't think. Uh, let, me, let me see. Not your mama's yoga. <laughs> I'll check it out. It looks like a some fad type of, but I'll, I'll, I'll take it out. I mean, I'll check it out. No reason not to. Don Wanderley. Hello, Don. Joe, if I do an intense work, I find myself ravenous later in the day. Tips. Um, go when you do that. Uh, go after when you're getting low after your lowest point after the meal. So instead of working out before the meal and then getting work and then eating in that window where you still kind of feel like you're ready to work out, you're going to be hungry again. So instead, do your workout after really hard and then center around um, low carb foods for a while. And I say low carb, not low carb, but like smart carb, uh, again, broccoli, if you like asparagus, um, you know, nice whole grain stuff, basically good food. Uh, even, you know, a burger, try to, try to be practical with it. Um, squash, and then you will break your body. What that will do is with the lack of sugar in that meal that day. And the fact that you're adjusting to fasting, you're going to push yourself way lower, and what your liver is going to have to do is respond and uh, start getting you more intensely into your fat burning stage. The reason you're teetering and you're getting hungrier is because you're not able to get fast enough and deep enough into reliance on your ketones. And remember that ketones are low level, OMAD is low level ketosis. You don't want severe ketosis, you don't want Adkins diet or carnivore. You want to be relying more efficiently on your fat reserves so that when you go to run or you go to exert or you go to lift some weights, you your body is going to keep you on a on safe ground with your abilities. You're not going to be the strongest during fasting, during a fasted state, but you should be you should be able to ease into a, a nice workout and then afterwards have maybe a ginger water or just a um, a Gatorade or just a water, anything no calorie, and then calm down, relax, stabilize your mind, and then go through the next day and repeat. Uh, not that it will be easy, but you should not. If you're getting too ravenous, you might you might do what I said uh, just for a while and then ease off on the activity until your body more easily adjusts. And then increase the activity just a little more so that you're getting the challenge of, uh, of the whole process. You want to get into... Get yourself back into burning fat as often as you can. Remember, when you eat the meal daily, it's going to take you out of out of uh, you know that ketosis state. But you're eventually going to dip back into it pretty quickly. The larger meal you eat, the more time it will take to get back into a ketosis state. But remember that. So use your carbs smartly. Um, when you when you want to fat adapt, then get rid of that. And I did a video uh, when to cut the sugar, when to cut back on your sugar. Go watch that. There's a time you need to you want to you want to be more uh, intense. Have a lighter meal, have a more protein based meal, and then play the play the field with that. Do that a couple of days, and then gradually add in some carbs. You'll find that you you bounce between hunger and not hunger. What will happen is your body will make peace with. Uh, with what you're doing and it hasn't yet if you're working out you might be working out too hard but it's probably that you just haven't adjusted properly yet 
It takes 10 days, then 14 days. Remember the mission critical, my video, mission critical. Those 14 days when you start, it's it, it can be tough because your body hasn't fully figured you out yet. Right now I'm on day, what is it, a 13 or 14 of serious intermittent fasting, OMAD fundamentals. And I'm already feeling super good. Uh, and it'll it'll only get better through the end of the month. So really look really having fun with that. But you should you should find yourself pretty on stable ground pretty soon. <laughs> Demont says, Debbie Omad, can you do a video on running a marathon? Uh, I don't know if Debbie runs or not. Do you run, Debbie? I don't know if you run. <laughs> Maybe she does. I love how you talk about meditation in the mind. Mr. Ruffy, thank you very much. Just becoming aware that the mind is different from the real you, yes, 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 makes a world of change in the perception. I look forward to the next episodes of this. Uh, I've got them in the works. I need to, to, I'm going to probably wait another week. And then when things are calming down at work, so I'm going to be able to put it sometimes. Yeah, they've not been very, I had to, we had to do some hiring. We had to do a lot. I've been, I've been very busy. Uh, the mind, yes, the mind, people are confused. The mind, you have 125 trillion uh, synapses in your brain. And every experience is a firing combination. And that firing combination is infinitely complex. And it's the equivalent of 1,500 Milky Way galaxies. Milky Way galaxy has like 400 billion stars. That's a lot of stars. That's more than there are people by a long shot. And yet your brain has 1,500 of, of those, of our galaxies, in your head, firing. Each combination is a, an act. Your first kiss, stubbing your toe on the door, the taste of food, all of those combinations, which are truly infinite almost. You could say almost knocking on the door of truly infinite all the things that you know, and you don't even know you know. That's infinite. Well, you call that a soul or the mind. The, 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 the brain is home to the mind, but the mind doesn't exist without all of those synapses and firings. And that it creates what older generations used to call a soul. So when you like the taste of food, what you do is you rely on one brain connection and it says, ah, I love that. When you resist the taste of food, that's another connection. And just like a Word document, uh, when the one you opened most recently goes to the top and the ones you use least go to the bottom. So that's exactly the way it is with OMAD. The more you do it, that's the file you're relying on. So your brain gets more used to those releases. Well, that's the new you. That's power. That's empowering because that teaches you that you can, to a very large degree, while succumbing to the forces of the world, you can create your world. Because you can create, you can carve out much of what is in your life to the you that you create. And this gets back to karma, which means action. You are your actions. You are what you do. It's, it's true in every world. It's true in every life. It's true whether you believe it or not, whether a person is religious or not. So that's why I, I think Eastern philosophy, Mr. Rati, is, um, is more in touch with truth than Western philosophy. I think Western philosophy is very technocratic and analytical. It misses the point. The point in, is that the mind is the eternal eye, the consciousness, the true tap-in of the divine, which I call the divine. You've heard me refer to it on this channel. Um, that's how I look at it. But yeah, I, do, I do think that's the best way to view all of your temptations, all of your craving. All of that is, is an illusion, and it comes from that connection in your brain, which you have power over. And that's the empowering part. Oh, uh, one more tip, Don. If I don't know if you're doing ashwagandha, take uh, one the first week and the next week take two full beakers of the ashwagandha. It is a, a liquid drop. You can get any version, but I recommend the Hawaiian farm version, and it will lower cortisol. It will help with cravings later after the workout. I did forget to mention that. Uh, but that will also motivate you. It'll give tremendous energy, and it does slightly raise testosterone. So it is, it's, it's, it's one of the best things in the world. And it's something that I take on days that and uh, Eleuthero. If you need a lot of energy, take four uh, and you'll have tremendous energy that you will notice. Add to that number three, maca. Uh, maca root in drops form. So Eleuthero, Siberian ginseng, uh, ashwagandha, and uh, maca. 
maca root, all those in drops form. Put them in your coffee in the morning. You'll have a rocking day, uh, and you'll be less hungry significantly. Uh, it, it, but that's another tip. I would. Uh, there's more to say about those, but I'm going to leave that alone for now. What do you think of Ramadan? Adam says. Uh, I have a lot of guys, um, uh, Muslim guys, at my uh, my hotel, and they uh, they run my valet department, and they are very good, hardworking people. And they've been in Ramadan, and they uh, uh, it, they they are really big on um, you know they they do the whole thing, and it's tough for them. I taught them about one meal a day. They know my story big time, and they. Uh, I still have trouble getting them to do more than a 23 hour fast. So, and then come evening, they're, they're ready to relax. You know, like they find it really tough to go 12 hours and not eat anything. You know, we owe matters can teach, uh, teach them a thing or two. Can we? I think a lot of the followers of this channel have done my water fast. So we're used to going days without food <laughs> and 23 hours is not that tough unless you're sugar addicted and you've lost your way. Then it's really tough. It's really hard coming back from addiction. When, when you're 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 in the lie of addiction, you're it's tough, 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 tough. But once you break it, you're done. The spell is broken. You you, you know it's a, it's a lie. It always was a lie, and, and you feel ashamed for having given to it. We're just over an hour. Look at that. Um, on 18 day fast right now, Todd. Hey, Todd. Welcome. Welcome back. I know I've seen you in the uh, chats before. Maria. What a wonderful surprise live video. Well, you know what? I, I, I decided about maybe nine this morning, 10. I said, I need to reach out again. Todd, water, coffee only, going for 21 days. Ooh, okay. Uh, if you, uh, you got 21 day water fast, okay. Um, I would recommend 21 days that you do only water. Uh, if you're adding coffee, you're going to be taxing your heart and your adrenals with the caffeine, and your body's going to become super sensitive to it. Also, you don't want to shower with soap. You want to relax. You need to make sure you're taking off work. I do not recommend that, my friend. Uh, seven days, five days is good enough. Actually, four, three or three days is really good, a water fast. It's really all you need. I didn't. I did the seven day this year. We didn't need to do that. Um, one guy commented on the video. He said, hey, uh, was OMAD not good enough? I'm like, no, it's not about that. It's about a spiritual thing sometimes. It, it helps to clarify your Put you in touch with your uh, your your misery, your 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 heartache, which of course builds character if you do it smart. But I would advise I would be careful if anytime you're doing a water fast, you really want to be very careful about adding anything else. And you you are going to hit around day six or seven, boy, it's going to kick you in the nards. It's going to uh, you're going to have so much weakness that you're going to have to. I'm not kidding you. You will have to lay down. I, I had to. I, I had to. I was at work one day on day six. I got so day four and day six, I literally almost could not hold my eyes. Like it was, I thought that I knew that I would stay afloat, but I was, I, it's not something that I would want to do again. My longest water fast was, yeah, it was seven days. So my longest juice fast was 31 days. My longest, well, that's, that's, uh, I once did one meal every three days. <laughs> I'm giving you all my, my longest times between meals. Yeah, that was that was uh, surprisingly not as hard as I thought. One meal every two days, and then one meal every three days. Uh, you get used to it, but it's not as satisfying and it's not as practical. So that's why I always come back to OMAD. I tell people now, forget all those long fasts. You don't need to do anything longer than three days. Um, you really don't need to, but it's up to you. Hi, Sample. What's worse, drinking diet soda and sticking to OMAD or staying away from diet soda and eating more frequently? Uh, no, guy, guy, my friend, the, the diet soda is fine. It's not going to hurt you. Do proper OMAD. Uh, you don't want to eat more frequently. That's definitely, anytime you're getting anything with calories that gets an insulin reaction, you're not fasting. So, uh, you, know, you know, you don't want to drink too much diet soda, but I wouldn't worry about that. If you do, you, I mean, honestly, I've done this. Look, it's been years now, guys. For those few of you out there who might be watching this or watching a rerun who still think the diet sodas are bad, I get checked. I don't have cancer markers. I don't have any of that. 
So, you know, it's not going to do anything to you. It might make you pee a lot more because it irritates your bladder. That's it. So <laughs> quit worrying about the diet soda. And I, again, it's, it's you're you're completely good. Just stay the course, stay faithful, and work on not relying on them as much. As you go, you'll get better. You can get rid of the diet sodas later on, or at least limit them. I look forward to my old man. Todd says, uh, starting Thursday, I gave lost or I have lost over 80 pounds. That's really good. I'm 63, 224. Or did you mean six foot three? 63, 200. Okay, it's time to. My target is 194. That's 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 good. If well, assuming you're six three, and no, but that may be. I don't know. Maybe that's right for you. My doc want 180. Okay. It's up to you that the weight you feel best at. Here's how you determine the weight you you the, your goal weight. Number one, you look good naked when you get out of the shower to yourself in the mirror. Number two, you are um, within range of the metrics, and your height is double your waist circumference. So, I'm 75 inches tall, actually 75 and a half. I'm right at six foot four now because of age. I've shrunk about an eighth of an inch, so I'm technically six three point eight or something like that. Um, and when I, if you take my waist about 35, what is that? It's about 30, I have a 34 inch waist, so 34, that's 68, so that's under that. So if your waist and your, your height and your waist ratio is less than, so two to one, then um, you're okay. That's how you set your goal weight. Ultimately, you live with yourself. If you have the most energy, you have the best self-esteem. If everybody around you is telling you you're too thin, you might want to listen. If they're telling you you're still fat, but you look good, then go with what you, you want. Go with what you believe is the right thing to do. But don't do that if you think it's easier, because what you'll do is you'll get to that weight, and you'll stop, and you'll start gaining weight again. So you want to get under that by 15 pounds. So that 180 sounds about right, no matter how you look at it. Just my two cents. Do what you want. Don says, can you eat more calories if you go low carb? Uh, well, yeah. Well, the, the trade-off with that, not really, because the trade-off with that is you're going to, you're going to, it's going to, it's going to meet a trade-off. Low carb, uh, high carb burns off faster. Low carb meets and stuff stays in you. Um, I would say do both on alternate and you will find your happy ratio. We'll keep going, and we'll close out here in a, a few more minutes. So. Joe is amazing. I don't know, man. I, I'm just a, a, a regular guy. A so. little bit eccentric, but, but a regular guy. Uh, I have clarity. That I, I'll say for myself. I, I've, I've learned a few things, because I am unconventional, extremely. Hell or High Water 33, that's an awesome name. What is a good mantra you would suggest for someone like myself trying to get back to an old man lifestyle, especially now working from home? I need to motivate myself and exercise self-discipline. Well, first of all, stop with the motivation. If you're having to reach external motivation, you're going to always lose the battle because just like luck, motivation runs out. You can watch all of my videos. You can go and, and I've said the same thing from the beginning. You have to generate motivation from within. This comes from knowing, having clarity of, of path. Is your path clear? Do you know that you, is it, is it that you want to lose weight? Why do you want to lose weight? What do you look to gain from that? Are you too heavy? Are you, is your, have your blood labs been negative and you need to get back in control? Uh, if that's the case, then that's a pretty good motivator. Um, you know you have to, to succeed. Otherwise, you're doomed to be a fat statistic. You are doomed to utterly and miserably fail. You'll be one of those that looks back on their photo album each year and gets more and more disgusted and say, well, look how thin I was there and I'm getting more disgusting looking every year until you get to the point where you say, you know, I'm in a crisis. What do I do? So here's the mantra. You can have, here are the mantras I've given, uh, the ones on this channel from the beginning. I don't know if, how long you've been subscribed. I can have it, just not now. Some people work well with mantras. Some people don't, uh, but I get why they, they're useful. Um, you can have it, just not now. So you want a pizza today, you want to break down, you say, I can have it, just not now. Put it at the meal. Um, 
uh, expect it, declare it, store it, say thanks. If somebody offers you food, that's another one. It's called the Ed's Principle. I did a video on that years ago. In 2016, I think I did a video on that. Um, get it, thank them for it, store it, and say, I'm going to have that tomorrow for my meal. Um, you can have it, just not, just not now. That's the big one. Um, if it, you know, put it on the plate. Uh, if it'll fit on your plate, that's your fate. <laughs> I haven't used that one as much, but um, that it, it is your purpose. It is your calling to fill up that plate. Fill up your plate and be happy with it. Uh, eat and be done with it. That's the other one. Eat and be done with it. Uh, if you can do that, your life is going to be much better. And you 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 accept that that's true the same way you accept that not touching a hot stove is true. You, you don't want to do that. You, and you know that if you touch a hot stove, you're going to burn your hand. You're going to need to go and get skin grafting or, you know, have some procedures. You're going to, you're going to lose your hand. Uh, but you know that. Well, know that put, apply the same level of knowledge to your own that. If you continue to go the way you go using shut, you know, a COVID, a lot of people now are using COVID as an excuse and they're, oh, I was stuck at home. I had to eat. You don't. That's the perfect time where you can prepare your meals properly and you can say, I'm going to eat what I want. I'm going to make chili lentil. Uh, I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to invest it. I'm going to eat a, a, a nice burger with an egg on top. Uh, I mean, I'm going to fill up the proper container. Stick around for my video. I've got a video coming on the perfect tray, the perfect one meal plate that I have coming in. It's a six compartment tray you can take to work. If you go out, you can store it. You can make a bunch of them, put them in your fridge. Not trying to promote something magical there. There is no magical button for motivation. You have to find a higher calling. And if you do, the higher calling is your cause, is the thing that you rely on. Um, you want to be around for your kids. You want to have, uh, I don't know if you have kids. I don't really think about what's, what, what's going on here, but um, you get the point. Uh, you look to yourself and you do it the same way you get up at what time, you know, what time do you get up? You get up at 9 a.m., you get up at 10. Somebody asks you what time you get up, you say, I get up at 9 a.m. or whatever. Same thing, you say, I eat once a day. Somebody brings food and it's not your time to eat, you say, I'm sorry, I'll, yeah, I'll eat it later. I'll, I eat, generally eat it around noon or whenever you eat. Uh, you set your hard and fast rules and you do it for yourself. I also have another video, Be a More Selfish Eater. Go back and watch that. Uh, you're not eating for for everybody else. You're not eating for your boss, for your kids. If you have them, your your best friend's brother's cousin's roommate who comes in out of town and wants to go drinking with you, uh, you stop that thinking. Just the other day, I, I took my girlfriend out and uh, we sat there. She joined me actually. She didn't have to, uh, but uh, she we sat there and I had a water and coffee. We talked. We held hands and we just had a nice time. Uh, that's the way. That's got to be good enough for you. Otherwise, you will be a fat statistic. Now, keep in mind, somebody's got to be a fat uh, fat statistic. Somebody's out there going to fail. Somebody's going to complain. Um, sometimes people send me ugly emails, and then they blame me. <laughs> I, can't, I can't control you. <laughs> so remember that, and remember that who's going to fill that spot. Is it going to be you? You can choose not to. You can say, I'm not going to fail because the, I've made my decision to succeed. Even if somebody brings home a pizza and they you, they didn't tell you, even if somebody asks you to cook for somebody and you cook for someone and you think, well, I got to eat because I cook for them, it doesn't work that way. Those people are failures. They'll always blame their circumstances on others. Every workplace in the world is like that. There's always going to be somebody brings donuts to the office or gives you a gift card to go shopping and then you use it. You realize you bought a bunch. You ate. You shopped when you were hungry. You bought a bunch of stuff you didn't really ideally need. None of those are excuses. I look back at myself and I feel like a super a super being because at times, because people keep saying it's so hard. You, you can do it if you're stubborn enough. That's the key to be stubborn. You got to be stubborn. You got to say, I, I don't do that. It's like monks, my, my Thailand friends, my monk friends they, who live in Thailand, they don't touch money. They don't drive. To me, that's weird. But if I go try to convince them otherwise, they're not going to bend. They're going to say, I don't drive. What do you do when you get bored with that robe? It's fine. That's awesome. What are you going to do when you get horny? Do you have sex? They're going to be like, no, we don't do that. Ever? Yeah, never. You see, they're, they're, they're in that, that monk mindset. And that's what this is. It's, it's a phase one monk mindset. Are you, are you game or are you not game? I hope that helps, 33. 
Todd says, the trick to great oatmeal is no processed foods. Well, the trick to, that's almost true. Um, it, well, I, I wouldn't say, but it does help if you can eat a, a better meal, it will help because you, you'll ultimately be paying yourself better dividends and you'll feel better about yourself. But uh, I would say that uh, the, the trick is to eat in control at all times and to understand that everything you eat, you are, account, you are accountable for. So if you're going to go eat a burger, enjoy your burger, have your burger. Uh, yes, the fries are processed. You know, they've got, don't worry about that. But at the same time, all, all things being equal, you do want to make the best meal, and you want to treat each meal as though not like a scavenger that doesn't care what they eat. You want to treat it like a um, a tiger that, that strips it and licks the blood, and you know, goes through the process of preparing. Or a lion, the female tears apart the carcass and gives, and they feed the family. Take pride in your food, and, and but don't idolize your food. That's another thing. That's another big thing with Omen. You don't want to idolize, start worshiping your food. Then you get to these morons who start thinking that if you take a certain supplement or you eat a certain thing, it's going to cure your hunger. It doesn't work that way. Whole food diet is always a good idea. If you want to do that, go get you some, you know, go get you some nice. Well, we already covered that. 33 continues. I do exercise in the mornings, but I do want to control more of my eating habits now that I eat a lot. I want to get back on in an omen state. Well, you've got to do it. Remember, you're gonna you're gonna pay your karmic debt. You're gonna pay your pleasure for every time you splurge. You're gonna pay that back, and you'll pay that debt and then some. You'll have money in the bank, so to speak, if you can pay that debt and keep going. So keep going and, and remember. Um, I ask everyone: six weeks, you'll be adjusted, but if you go four months, you'll stay at whatever weight you, you get to. And you'll find that you lose it. after two weeks to a month. You really get into it. You'll start to love it. But you've got to do that. My longest water fast prior to this, so we'll go to an uh, hour and 30 minutes. So we're at hour 21 minutes right now. My longest water fast prior to this was five days. That's a very good time. Use plenty. You don't need more. It's easy. I thought I was going to die on my first. Um, my, yeah, I think you said my disc first or five day water yeah if you haven't done it before you need to build up don't i i would i would really strongly advise against too many of those you do them only if you're an experienced faster otherwise you don't need to do that it's amazing scrolling down these chats how much, uh, I, how much I lose track. I have to scroll back up and then somebody posts something and throws it right up to the top and I have to find where I was again. <laughs> Joe, where are you now? I am in uh, Humble, Texas. That is by Houston, for those of you who may not know. It is right by um, close to the um, International George Bush Airport, which is where I live, right by uh, your height and weight, I'm six foot three point eight, right at six, just say six foot four. Uh, and right now I'm 203. By the end of the week, I'll be right back on back into it. One minute. So I'll be, uh, um, I'll be right back where, you know, and I'm going to drop, I'm going to go back to about 189, 195, somewhere in there. Uh, stay in Wonderland. 12 days now on OMAD. Michael Morris, welcome. Just passed Mission Critical. There we go. There we go. He's even got the turn around. I like it. New lifestyle for me. And I'm following him during videos. Miami, Florida. Miami. Yeah, I love that area, man. I love Florida. I know it's a lot of crazy people in the news. Like, it's funny. Look up a donut operator's video on the crazy people of Florida. Crazy arrests. It is so funny. But I love the area. I, I used to travel out there. And uh, when we were kids, we'd get taken out there. I, I love Miami. Way to go, man. You got this, Morris. I have a 23-inch waist, Todd. You have a 23. Do you mean 32? <laughs> oh, wow. You are like a porcelain doll, like so, but really small. You have a 23 -inch. I've heard there are girls that can, like really small women that can have like a, you know, like a child, like 23. I don't even know if that's possible with a child. You, you meant 32, right? Joseph Hinton, I'm on day eight, going very well, down nine pounds. Awesome, man. I eat around 1 p.m. because I work through 11. That's, that's really good. You get up, you get it taken care of. 
Um, sometimes I get, I don't get a dinner break, so I make sure I eat before I go to work, which is a good policy. Yeah, I don't like eating at work. Sometimes I do. I take my tray and go. 34. There you go, John. <laughs> I need to have a 23 inch one. That's like a bicep. That's a, Lou Ferrigno got to 23 and three quarters inch arms. So did Hulk Hogan. He actually got to around 24 inch arms. I'm like, dude, their arms are bigger than their legs. Nobody's got a 23 inch one. The only issue is that I get very sleepy after I eat. Any suggestions? Yes, do a one mile walk or even a half mile walk as fast as you can go while holding down a conversation. Put on an audiobook, uh, headphones, and get smarter while you do it. After the first week, you will not get tired. Uh, maybe at the latest seven days. Um, also, I'm assuming you've had your blood sugar checked. If you haven't, get it, get on that, get a blood panel. Uh, depending on your age, you want to make sure that you're getting checked, uh, thyroid, all of that. Usually, when you're sleepy after the meal, after the meal. Your body has gotten used to producing a lot more insulin to bring down your sugar, which means you probably have a higher fasting insulin, which is why it's difficult. But it won't be for very long. That's going to go away. Even if you don't do anything, it will eventually go away. And it also depends a little bit on, on what you eat and how much, uh, how active you generally are. So if you've been fasting and you're really sedentary and you've had a little bit of insulin resistance going on or the beginnings of it, what you'll do is your body will and you're not diabetic, your body's going to bring down your sugar efficient. And then, but it's going to be a little bit too efficient. So then you get tired because your, 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 your sugar crashes pretty quickly. Uh, the, the, the solution is to, as you eat, is to go and tax your body to, to, to start burning some sugar quicker. And it'll have the effect of boosting your metabolism and your digestion. And in about five to 10 days quicker, within your first month, you will not have that problem. What did I miss? Melatonin from Costco? I don't recommend those unless you seriously have a problem. Um, the melatonin in your body, it can really mess you up and stays in your system a long time. I used to take that uh, years ago as a big guy. I had uh, The doctor wanted to give me a CPAP as I was really, really fat. And um, I just kept taking them. And, of course, they would make me tired the next day. They wouldn't work as well in the middle of the night, except maybe around 4 a.m. they would kick in and they would keep me asleep really hard. And then I would get up and I would feel broad. I just didn't like it. Maybe they worked for it. Sisby, welcome. Huh? That, your, your username does look a little familiar. Mm -hmm. Hi, Joe. Really proud of how well you've maintained your weight loss. So appreciate your no BS approach and for your straightforward advice today. And I see how well you've been. Yes. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, really, I'm my my stubbornness, my anger, some of my personality flaws actually help with weight loss because I'm very determined. Tony Martin, I've tried and failed. Well, what are you going to do? Sit around? You're going to sit around and fail some more and uh, continue to grow. Uh, continue to you know sulk. Don't sulk. Keep going. Let's see. I'm telling my girlfriend to jump on the live stream. She just texted me. Um, really, uh, Tony, uh, the, the, it's, it, you've got to keep going. You forgive yourself. You move on. You say, I'm not going to do it. You learn from your mistakes. Otherwise, like I said to the others, it's fat statistics sitting. You're not going to survive. You're only going to get worse if you don't do it. You can do it. Joseph Hintzler, the best advice me is when you said to stop and acknowledge the craving and then step back. Absolutely. You become a third party of your craving when you acknowledge it. When you say craving, it even works if someone is yelling at you. You say yelling. You don't say it out loud. You say it in your head. You look weird if you say it out loud. But if you do that, you start to realize you have a choice in that. But that's an action. The action is not you. You see? That way, if you cheat, it's always you cheat. You're always choosing to do it, which is why it's... It is what it is. Uh, Tony, one more thing. If I can help you, reach out to me in, uh, in joe at joeholmanonline.com. Best advice? I have a new website, by the way, for those of you and a new content. Um,
sorry. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Um, everybody wants something. Wanting, 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 creating, 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 and feeling does not require you to act absolutely not. And if it does, then you've got something wrong because you're not being honest with yourself. So um, thank you, Sample. Guitar Man, welcome back. I'm wanting. Oh, here we go again. Got to find out where I left off. Wanting to get back into OMAD again is the way that I lost this now sadly been regained. The biggest problem I have is being an emotional binge eater. Any tips would be greatly appreciated. I don't know how much of this stream you've seen. You probably just joined us. Um, go back and watch. Go back and watch the videos. I have videos on binging. Um, basically, the emotional eating thing is you relying on the food because of other imbalances in your life. You have to utterly and completely annihilate those correlations to your your life it will never make you happy to follow those cravings ever it will never satisfy you it will only distract you but you know this already so go back and watch my videos on how to beat any addiction basically you have to break yourself and you have to get in that that man baby stage where you think to yourself I, I feel so worthless. I've tried and tried and failed. And then you have to just hover. You have to hover with the fact that you yourself are in charge of your actions and are the result of your actions. And as a result, you can set, you can start again. And you start by realizing that eating is just eating. It has no value unless it has nourishment value, which is why originally we ate so that you can have fuel to live. If it's anything beyond that, it is destructive. See you, Deb. Uh, but I don't have time to go into more than that, Guitar Man. Uh, reach out if you need some help, but I will say this. Go back and watch the videos. There's a lot here. Um, binging is self-destructive, even if you're not overweight. Uh, and it, it is a fascination. I have so many videos on it, but uh, it will never bring you happiness. You have to remember that. You are under a spell. You have to break it. I uh, hope that helps. My favorite saying of yours is, you will eat what is around you. Yes, you will eat. Well, that's one of the uh, cardinal laws. That's one of the cardinal laws. Uh, It, it, that's absolutely the way it is. And the cardinal principles are absolutely true. We're at 133. Now. I think I'm going to, let's do uh, 140. We'll, we'll, we'll go another six or seven minutes. Pizza is evil. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just pizza. It's just uh, cheese and bread and yeast and tomato sauce and mm. garlic and spices. Uh, that's what it really is. No food is evil. Got to correct you there, Todd. Um, food is food. It is a thing that goes into your body to, to be metabolized. Just the same way hunger is not bad. Hunger is there when you're really hungry. And if you're hungry enough to eat broccoli or asparagus, you're really hungry. And you feel your stomach growling, you're really hungry. Uh, if you, It's your lack of, it's your evil demonic esteem of pizza that makes pizza into more than this. I have videos where I, I eat three pieces of pizza, deep dish, pan pizzas, and a sweet tea or sometimes a grape juice or something. And I'm rocking out. I'm not losing off on my day or my life because of a food choice. My food is mine. I choose that. So I can have pizza. I wouldn't want to eat it too much because it's it's not it's not really good for you and it's not really that satisfying to me. That's a kid's favorite food. But don't think of foods as evil. The problem is when we think of foods as evil is we go out of our way to treat them like a naughty mistress. 
and we go out to meet the naughty mistress as opposed to the wife, which represents the good food at home. If you destroy that naughtiness and bring home the mistress to the wife and they suddenly get along, guess what? There's no thrill in cheating anymore. You see the analogy. You see the point. So there's no point in referring to them as evil. Cookie cake's evil. No, they're not evil. They're just not helpful. So you don't need to pursue them. To answer your question, 33 says, Hell or High Water 33 says, and to answer your question, I am 511 and 185 been subscribed since the beginning. Only want to lose 30, but want to gain control. Anyways, I am a big fan. Thank you for everything you do. Okay. Um, awesome. Now that you mentioned that, I think your username is familiar. It's so so funny. Some some usernames change, but some of the ones I do remember, some of the ones I don't. And then I start talking about well, some of the other ones I, I remember. Whole Foods will change your taste buds, and that's amazing. Uh, yes, and it should be a natural process for that. So when you start off eating less than ideal, stay with it, and you'll find that the time comes for, for you to graduate to better food. South Korea man, or woman, I'm not sure. But watching from South Korea, I know nothing really about. I know that they're different from North Korea. That's about all I know. I know I love the noodles that I get from the market here. I don't know if those are real South Korean noodles or not, but there are some of them. They are man good. Keto Mojo for blood test. Everyone fails. Todd's blasting us here. I love it. Uh, no perfect person out there. Keep trying for yourself. New website. Maria says a lot of pressure to take the COVID vaccine. Well, now I've I've been working with. Uh, I remember Maria is uh, in liberal Canada, pro-vax Canada, and they're just about as authoritarian as you come, short of China, and uh, it's like living. Yeah, it's like living in a 1940 movie. It's insane. Um, I hope you're doing all right, Maria. I know it's been a little while since we talked. Um, I think we're not done with this yet. And I think my predictions, dire as they are, are still going to come true. I think we're going to really have trouble with uh, our culture war. It's going to get worse. You know, oppressed groups are going to cry out, and all of this stuff is going to continue, and we're not going to be done yet, thanks to this pandemic. To boot. Number one key is you are in control. Hi, Joe. Hi, Victoria. John. Lily Brentley. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Just as we're about to close out, I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up today. Uh, if you have any other questions, go ahead and post them, and uh, we will go from there. Remember, we accomplished a lot uh, in this series. We've talked about a lot. Uh, if you guys need some help, reach out. The biggest thing to understand is. Everything, as we pointed out, talking about the brain and the mind and the spiritual side of things, all of that is designed by you. And when I say designed by you, once you realize that truth, it is, it's, it's you. It is your, your ability to create those connections in your brain, to say, this is pleasure, this is not. You can take your worst food and say, I want this to be my, my favorite food. You can get up at 5 a.m. And say, I, I'm going to take an ice water bath every day at 5 a.m. That's miserable. But you can do it if you train yourself. It takes between 21 and 66 days to create a new habit. You can't tell me that if you do OMAD for that amount of time, you will not be completely sold and adapted. You will. You absolutely will. Website is joeholmanonline.com. We're here in the chat for those of you asking. Uh, Shouldn't be, uh, it's the same as I've had. I just, uh, I'm using a different provider, a little bit better feature. Uh, so you guys have a good night. And um, John says, I'm uh, worried about the culture war. These green haired feminists are demanding that fat lives matter. We must open the buffets. Yeah, that's true. It's, uh, you're always going to have these same uh, losers 
who uh, are asking for special rights and special privileges, they're going to want more and they're going to want to be pleased and they're going to want to, of course, gain weight and uh, subject all of society to their problems because they don't want to take accountability. That's the left mindset. That's the loser mindset. You guys take care. Blessings and um, good thoughts. We will talk soon.